Hi, this is your host, Avalim Bhartia, and welcome to a brand new episode of our series, TFIR Topic of the Month, aka T3M. And this month's topic is Platform Engineering is DevOps there. And today we have with us once again, Pavel Despot, Senior Product Marketing Manager at Akamai Technologies. Thank you. And the theme this month is Platform Engineering is DevOps dead? Before we jump into this uh, topic, of course, there are different school of thoughts, there are different opinions, but uh, if I just ask you, uh, how would you define platform engineering, what it is, and how different if it is from DevOps? I think the right way to think about it is is not different, it's it's a natural evolution. And what I mean by that is if you, if you look at any any DevOps maturity model, broadly speaking, you have you know generally five stages where you have no devops you're just starting off then you know level 3 is you've got the basics you've got everything going then you get to start measuring things and then kind of in the last step of devops broadly again speaking you start optimizing what you're measuring right so where does platform engineering it's it's the next step insofar as once you've done all this work right once you've figured out what works once you've instrumented it to measure it well why don't you just reuse all that? Why don't re- you reuse all that for different groups, for different projects, for different workloads? Uh, because presumably, right, if you've gone through that and if you've done a, an even remotely decent job, um, there's value in it. And you can reuse a lot of that to help other teams that might not have put forth the effort into it. Now, it's not different in that it doesn't walk away from any of the concepts of DevOps or the philosophies, right, of of either technical or otherwise. It's it's actually the opposite. You can think of it, I think, in, in the platform engineering versus DevOps, it's now you're you're productizing it for, for all intents and purposes. You're productizing the automation, right? You're productizing the pipelines so that others don't have to go and rebuild all that again, right? And, and presumably, um, the way to think of it, or the way to think of it rather is, uh, if just packaging up all those different tools. So you do have to, in a sense, really think of it as a product manager, albeit internal, right? So there's a lot of things you might be may be able to get away from, but that's essentially what, what platform engineering is talking about, or packaging all the stuff. So it's 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 an evolution in a, a, you know, a kind of systematic way of packaging all these things. Talk a bit about what is driving this evolution and is the platform the next phase, or are we talk? Will we still talk about DevOps will be there, SREs will be there, and platform engineering will also be there? I think everything will be there, right? There's very few technologies that you can say have completely overtaken their predecessors. Uh, I'll point to FM radio, right? I was driving from Boston to New York this afternoon or this uh, this week, and I I turned on FM radio, right? Despite the fact that I have five G all the way. Uh, so they will absolutely continue to be there. I mean, you know, maybe in 50 years or, or something, but I think what compels you and what's driving people is the constant pressures on all sides to do two things. One is to your point about how software is delivered, you can have, you know, more waterfall, even quarterly release cycles. If you're mailing out CDs and tapes, not to go too far back. Uh, maybe even a quarterly or monthly release cycles works if you're kind of downloading updates. It doesn't work if you have a SaaS application. And, and I'll broadly throw the word SaaS out as loaded as it is these days. But yeah, you know, or the Paramount Paramount uh, streaming service, right? For that we were just talking about to watch Star Trek. Um, they have to deal with all of these things and it's immediate. They need the service is not, oh, I can wait for a software update. The is if author there is a bug, they have to fix this now. And I think the the driver there of why to move to whether it's platform engineering or, or DevOps is a response to all these needs. Because hey, you have to roll out a patch quicker. What are you gonna do? You're not gonna use waterfall, right? Um, hey, we have to add a new feature because we have this XYZ event coming up and yeah, you know, we have to roll that out. How are you gonna do it? Well. You know, DevOps tells us that we should compartmentalize and we should test and all that kind of stuff. You're not going to do it realistically any other way. So I think that's that's just what's driving everyone to to do all of this, right? You have to become more efficient and look 
everywhere he can to do so. How much evolution is happening in real world? Because sometimes these discussions happen at different level vendors. Sometimes they originate at user level also. So what are you seeing in the context of platform engineering? It varies based on who you're talking to and on a couple of factors. So I, uh, in my, my previous life, I did a lot of architecture for the SaaS providers. And they were especially suited for taking a platform engineering approach. The reason for that was that what they had to build was as a SaaS provider, and especially these days, the way you consume any of these services, right? Think of any business app that you consume. You swipe a credit card and then all of a sudden you get, you know, maybe a new host name, certs that match, a bunch of infrastructure for your own instance. You know, maybe it's shared, maybe it's segmented, however they do it. All that stuff has to happen. Um, and what in the background actually has to happen for that nice little, oh, Pavel's new instance of the SaaS app that he just swiped a credit card for. Uh, in the background, what actually has to happen, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of provisioning in reality, right? These these most of these don't have a single group, right? It's not like one single monolith they're just deploying, right? Like a some war file that they're just duplicating over and over. It's a number of services that's presented via unified UI. And that team's usually the one that has the, you know, kind of control being the, the front, uh, being the front and center for customers. And, you know, we did this with a few folks and we've talked about publicly in, in blogs, but the, the challenges there were exactly what we talked about serving it and, giving everyone the capabilities that they needed in a consistent way. So uh, in this particular one, a couple of the examples, I think a couple of takeaways of how to be a success in that case, because remember, you, you have to almost look at it like you're a product manager in some way, but uh, one, they defined the capabilities. They define the interactions, right? Because if you're a platform engineering group and you say, hey, everyone, I've got this great way to deploy and manage all my compute and storage and containers and whatever, whatever, right? And your software life cycles understand up front kind of what you're going to provide and whatnot. Make sure you've talked to all the different groups and they understand what that platform is going to provide, right? It might sound basic, like, hey, agree on the use case. But if you're providing a platform, make sure the expectations and what you're providing are, are correct. Um, the other piece is you mentioned it earlier. Operations is also a thing, right? Once you deploy it, you have to keep it running. So again, if you are the platform engineering team and you have all these different groups kind of using what you put together, make sure beforehand, and this is one of the things, um, uh, one of the groups we've worked with did a really great job above. Uh, it was, hey, when you need help, again, almost as a customer, here's what we need. We need this information, this log, right, where things happen. You don't want to do that when it's you know 3 a.m. and you just got the pager duty to say like, oh, it's it's broken, right? Figure all that stuff out. Again, not, not to beat that one too much to death, but put on like your fake, not fake, but amateur product management hat. You, know, you don't have to worry about TAM and all that kind of stuff necessarily, but look at it that way, right? If you want people to use this, which is ultimately the goal of you building this platform, right? Because the goal of platform engineering is to further accelerate, take the, all the benefits, right? Your mean time to restore, your velocity, all the stuff that you normally measure with DevOps. And make that better and bring it to more people, right? Via this platform that you're going to build that, you know, takes care of all the infrastructure. So um, think of it think of it in many ways as a service that you're providing. And with that service comes, how do we interact? What do I need when, you know, something's wrong? Um, how do I, you know, how do I, in, how do I follow up with the team? Because you are trying to get them to use it, right? To see the benefits of what you built. So I think that's, that's, um, that's a really important example or, or some things that we've seen to make you know, these platform engineering things successful. And, and this is even before we officially called it platform engineering, right? It's just, hey, we're a SaaS company and we need to be able to service, you know, 50 different groups with, you know, hundreds of thousands or hundreds of instances. So, If I ask you that, you know, if you have to make a Venn diagram where we look at, hey, we have DevOps, we have platform engineering, we are, sorry, we are not even talking about DevSecOps at this point. But, you know, if we look at organization holistically, then, hey, this 
is the right approach for that is like uh, there are company who are full, to, totally into cloud they're all cloud native there are company who are doing a lot of hybrid so so is that a right or wrong approach where you say hey no for this kind of use case or this kind of approach or this kind of platform this is how you should go or uh, no you have to embrace these practices irrespective of where your workload is running does it make sense where the workload is running it becomes interesting so i think if it's in the cloud yes because any cloud uh, you should it should Definitely consider it, right? Because there's not 100% of the time, but chances are if you've moved things there, right, aside from some lift and shift stuff that may be kicking around, it tends to be a lot more modern, distributed kind of architecture, right? Um, And again, aside from those lift and shift kind of cases. So if you're in the cloud, that's probably one on the, you know, on the balance. Hey, is this workload? And is this something that I should kind of a, pursue a platform engineering perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just because it's on prem, would I exclude it? No. Uh, but it, what kind of on prem do you have? Right? Do you have a very classic kind of mainframe, or you know, you used a lot of web logic and you got a bunch of J two E stuff kicking around, or a bunch of internal stuff? Applications that are more monolithic and less distributed, and yeah, you know, or, or need less updates or have less updates. Would I bother with a platform engineering there? No, because I think going back to, you know, last time we spoke about cost is, it's the same approach you want to be delivered is if I do that for, let's say my mainframe application, right? If I go through the effort, because there's going to be some effort, right? Both technical and kind of selling it internally, selling the notion, getting everyone on board. Uh, It's a, you know, that's an effort that you should keep in mind when you're pursuing these and judging your overall ROI. There's going to be some effort. So is it worth it for those? Possibly, uh, because remember, what does it do for you? It, it improves your velocity. It lets you address bugs more quickly, right? Gets you patches in places, decreases your failure rate, right? Because you catch things earlier deployment, you can roll back more quickly. So if if that applies to your on-prem or cloud environment, great. It almost always, more often apl- applies in a cloud environment. Um, but I wouldn't say the location is the determining factor. It's more so, is your on-prem, like, did you go full containerized? Uh, in which case, yeah, absolutely. You know, do a platform engineer for on-prem, like, by all means. Um, if you're, you know, rocking a bunch of bare metal, you know, HP servers from, you know, maybe five years ago that you've long since amortized and just don't want to touch, don't know if I'd platform engineer those guys. Since this is kind of the theme or topic and the, the the whole idea came from KubeCon last year at Detroit that uh, there were, you know, the booth, you know, the DevOps is dead, blah, blah, blah. So I will throw the question, you know, that we do hear, you know, that, hey, DevOps is dead, now the time for something else. From, as you said, you no know, these things really, I want to hear your opinion, is, is DevOps really dead? No, no, um, not at all. Uh, and and I'll, I'll, I'll throw out a couple of examples. Uh, so let's say, uh, you are a, a younger stage company, right? You're starting a gaming, you know, you're taking a run at some gaming app or, or an OTT or maybe a commerce site or an AI app, you know, insert thing here. Uh, so if you take the kind of conventional wisdom is you come up with an MVP, right? You fail fast, you do some sort of flavor in that. Now, going back to kind of what we said earlier, make your decisions very thoughtfully. So do I, in that case, if I'm, if I'm that person, right, we're on that team and we say, okay, guys, we can put some investment in, in creating a platform or do we roll out a couple new features? In that case, it, and it's a very personal situation, so I certainly don't want to fault anybody who makes any decision, right? Because it's, it's, it's again very personal or very specific, but is platform engineering is spending the time to do that really going to help? And also, by the way, how far along are you in your maturity model? Right, you don't want to be halfway up the DevOps ladder and try to jump all the way up to right. If we consider this as a platform engineering is, a, is ostensibly an evolution, right? If you're, a, I just started and I'm starting to implement some observability. If you're kind of on that rung of the ladder, you probably shouldn't just jump up and grab for, you know, two rungs up until you've got optimization, right? Until you 
blow out your, your whole process a little bit. So I think that's one of them, right, is, is relative maturity. And this can vary group by group, right? Large orgs have a unit that might be earlier on. Um, so, so that's one thing to think about it. And then the other thing is think about how much reuse you're going to get out of it. Uh, some of our customers, uh, we see a lot, especially in the gaming space, there's a ton of different technologies that these folks need to use to make it work as, to make their apps work as well as they do. That when you actually go load a game, you get a match made in a few milliseconds, right? And you can join. Like that's a ton of work and there's a ton of different technologies. So in that case, if you do have a, a pretty heterogeneous set of technologies in your stacks and your clouds, uh, trying to kind of unify it all in this one platform that does everything for everybody can be and will likely be a lot harder. Right. Um, if everything is like HTTP based microservices, right, and you've just got a bunch of containers and 90 percent of the workloads in your in your org work that way. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a lot easier to do a platform that. But if you're rocking VMs and containers here and then, you know, some bare metal here, all of a sudden that's a, a far bigger challenge. Right. To be as useful as you can to as broad a, n- a number of people. Again, not to beat this one too much to death, but I'll kick the horse one more time. It's it becomes a, almost a product management problem, right? And is that where you really want to go um, in search of your improved, you know, velocity and, and time to restore? Once again, thanks for explaining that. Now, if you look at there are different organizations, they are in, uh, in d- different stages of their own journey. And sometimes when we not only talk about these new technologies, when we talk about these new terms, new jargon, sometimes they get overwhelmed that they are trying to figure out, hey, which is the right approach for us. So if I asked you that, uh, what advice do you have for organizations so that they embrace the right path for their own organization, for their own journey? We've all been in a situation where you're kind of thinking to yourself, hey, is the reason this technology choice was made was because somebody wanted to work on it? And while that might be fun for, you know, home science projects and whatnot, I think the advice I'd give is to certainly avoid that and to be very thoughtful. Before you figure out how, make sure you can answer what. Uh, If you put the how before the what or don't have a what at all, you're you're not going to know if you've succeeded or failed or even got there. Like, should I stop? If you don't know what you're trying to accomplish, right? So that kind of, if you take that approach, the issue of, oh, hey, let's make a platform. If you can't answer why, stop. It doesn't mean you shouldn't, but you should be able to answer why, right? What are you trying to do, right? I've got a bunch of code that I need to deploy quicker, or, you know, what, whatever it is for your case. And if you can't answer why, then l- look at it. Because like we said, we, we've seen those situations where like, oh, it's the right thing to do, but Technology isn't always about the most popular thing. Like we were saying before about FM, it's still around because it still serves a purpose, right? We didn't rip all this out because why? Why would you? It it serves its purpose. And if that purpose is still valid, then do it. Why, you know, why for the sake of, you know, some resume padding or, hey, our platform uses X, Y, Z. That's rarely, um, that's rarely a durable uh, IT dis- reason for an IT decision. Pavel, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this topic today. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you.